you know sometimes you just want to ride around with no connection to the world clear your head do whatever you need to do sometimes though you might need your phone a GPS some way to know where it is you're going today we're gonna to talk about well how to mount that cell phone or GPS does anyone even still use a GPS and somebody used all my gas I think it might have been me Welcome back to the channel guys. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Max, and I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chattahoochee Harley-Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you wanna learn more about Harley-Davidson, hit the subscribe button right now. Today's video, we actually have some products from Zero 3D, so let's go unbox them. Now, to be honest, I think at this point in the video, y'all know more about this than I do because I titled and thumbnailed it. I don't really know what's in here, so let's, uh, boom. So the main point of the install is the premium smartphone holder. This one is the powered one. It is a 1.3 amp amount of power to your cell phone to keep it charged up on the road. They do actually have a not powered one too. All the links for this stuff will be in the description, of course. Then we have a ton of Sierra's accessory ball mount system. Really cool system. Let's see which ones they sent me. The universal ball mount. The fairing mount for 14 and later. They do make one for 13 and earlier too. The perch mount, the mirror mount, and the 7 8 to 1 inch clamp mount. And of course some stickers. So with all these mounts that they sent, it seems it best to show them off on a 2014 later touring model. Um, specifically for this really nice fairing mount. I should probably go find a, a bike to put this on then. So I mentioned this is the powered version of the cell phone mount. Let's see what's in the box real quick before we talk about how to mount it. Because both of the cell phone mounts, the unpowered and the powered, both just come with the cell phone holder itself. And some instructions, of course. I'm just kidding, you're probably going to want those. This version also comes with a harness to actually make it powered. I should mention right now while I'm thinking about it, this harness runs from the battery to the cell phone mount, but not directly to the phone. That cable's not included. There's a lot of variations. You probably already own one anyway. So that's gonna be your difference between the powered and unpowered is that USB port right there in the bottom. And it's gonna mount on any of the ball fitments that they sent in the box as well. Obviously, since I'm going to the battery, I'm gonna have to take a lot of this bike apart. So I'll be sure to throw some tips in there on some of how I do that. But I picked this bike specifically because it has ape hangers and the most common way to mount a cell phone mount, a cup holder, anything like that is with the perch mount. When I say perch, I mean this piece right here holding on the master cylinder on either the brake side or the other side on the clutch side. It would mount something like this and quite frankly that's above the fairing and looks kind of crazy in my personal opinion. Set of apes, I stay away from the clutch perch if I can or the master cylinder perch. I should add too, the perch mount is available in black or chrome, as is the seven eighths to one inch bar mount. This set of handlebars is actually one and a quarter, so I won't be using this today, but they do offer a one inch, an inch and a quarter version. So just make sure you select the color that you want and the size that you need. I have a funny feeling I'll be able to find something to mount that to later down the road. They have a whole line of things that mount to this ball system, that I'll talk about in just a minute. But since I have to take the fairing apart to run this harness, I'll just put my mount in when I'm putting it all back together again. So let's start disassembly. To remove the fairing is super easy, just a couple of screws. Here, 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 and here. Oh, did I mention this bike is for sale? I think you guys are probably plenty smart enough to know how to take the fairing off now that you know where the screws are. It's a T27, by the way, not a T25. All right, now that's off, we can do the gas tank and I got some tips for you on a quick and easy way to do it so that you're not so worried about, you know, messing it up or, it, I mean, it seems kind of, kind of sketchy. All right, this is the super high speed tech tip.
For one, don't pull this whole tube up. Just disconnect it right here. One handed is tough. I got it, totally, totally got it. There we go, okay. This guy, this guy. Now, everything underneath the center console, the fuel pump, the vent lines, the CB harness, all that stuff is disconnected from this. You can leave it on the tank. Four bolts and a fuel plug and we're out of here. Now this one being a trade-in, it's slam full of fuel because they're always full when you buy a new bike, right? The point of all that is to get to this part of the bike right here. Main harness runs through here. Best place to route your wires. Safe, they won't get nicked, all that good stuff. Anytime I'm running a harness like this, I always start at the battery, particularly if the bike has a fairing. I'm gonna leave the fuse out because if for some reason it quits working later, that's gonna be my first check and I don't wanna have to take the whole bike apart to get it. So I'm gonna tuck that down there and then I'll start routing the wire up. Once I get my length all set right, I'll snap this whole thing into place. I got a lot of options going to the center of the fairing like this. If this were my bike, I would probably put a little notch right in the vent, wherever, you know, I'd kind of check it out more. I'm not actually gonna do that today. The tool I would use though, since you guys always ask me about tools, is a Dremel, but not with a cutoff wheel like you normally see people use. Instead, it looks like a drill bit, but it's actually a cutting tool for things like that. So we'll notch just the width of the tool and now uh, your wire fits in there. I just really don't want to alter this bike, um, you know, like that anyway. I started to just route the wire through here like I would if I were mounting that bar mount that I could clamp really low right around here. That's where I'd route it from. If you're going all the way up there, it's best to try to get your wire up here. It just it just looks cleaner, that's all there is to it. I need to go ahead and mount this so that I know how long to make this portion of the harness. I take the nut, threaded side out, slide it on, pop that guy on there, tighten the nut. Once it's started a little bit, I can move this however I need to move it so that I'll be able to see it. And I can adjust that later too. Tighten until it doesn't move anymore. And I can go ahead and set my phone in here. I'm gonna unscrew here till my phone slides in. And then it's just as simple as that and my phone always fits in there now. Just that simple quarter turn, my phone goes from sliding around to being tight and secure. One of my favorite aspects to this particular mount. For all of you guys that are installing the power mount, this actually, even fully tight with a little bit of the seal removed right there, still fits good. Sometimes routing a harness for the first time is kind of trial and error, so you just gotta do what, what looks right, and then you might have to go backwards a little bit too. Unfortunately, Ciro's instructions aren't the best in how to route it, but most companies don't really tell you how to route the, the harness, so what do you do? Let's put this tank and stuff back on. I have another tip as far as that uh, main wire harness area right here. Make sure you reinstall these two zip ties if you have ABS. It helps keep these brake lines away from this tank bolt because that tank can crush that ABS line if it's not routed in this trough perfectly. One of them goes up here within an inch of this bend and the other goes right below this tab. So take a mental note of what this looks like if you have an ABS model. Now I'm gonna go for a ride and show you how this cell phone mount works uh, in, in real world stuff, not just in the shop. But before I do, I wanna show you how some of these other mounts work minus the install, just what they would mount to and what it would look like. Because one of the beauties of this, even the powered version of this, you just unplug it and it can very quickly become a cell phone holder on multiple different vehicles or objects or whatever you might have in mind. The harness, obviously, you're not gonna move all the time, but the cell phone mount is easily movable. So for the universal ball mount, uh, they advertise very heavily to use it on side-by-sides. Um, the thing I like most about it is it is in fact universal. They have different sizes to fit different size bars. So the side-by-side -side frame tube that's giant, golf carts, your square tubed 
roll cart, whatever you might think of, I don't know. I think they just didn't think to include tool carts because not everybody has the desire to like soup theirs up and make them really cool. As far as the handlebar mount goes, I mentioned that they sent me a seven eighths and one inch. I meant to ask for one and a quarter inch because all of your Harleys are either one inch or inch and a quarter. Generally, if you put some aftermarket ape hangers or something, you're gonna wanna go with the one and one quarter, particularly on a touring bike like the one I did today. But since they did send me a seven eighths and one inch, I did find a seven eighths inch handlebar to use. On my sweet new mini bike that is in fact running seven eighths inch handlebars. So now when I practice my wheelie game in the shop or riding up to the parts department to get more parts, I have a place to put my cell phone. <laughs> the mirror mount is really cool because it doesn't have to clamp to the handlebar. If you have black, that could scratch something potentially. I should note though that the mirror mount on a Harley did not work on the hydraulic side for my brakes. That would probably mean that on a model with hydraulic clutch, it would not work. So you might want to do the perch mount instead. Take a look at Sierra's website though, because their cup holders, their action camera mounts, all of that stuff mounts to their ball system that they use. So I'm hoping to down the road, get some of those action camera mounts, which is part of why the black mounts are on my bike right now, because I got a place in order myself. Now a shorter power cable would probably be cool for this. I was actually going to go ride this thing, but I'm thinking it's gonna rain. So we're just gonna go hide underneath this pavilion and I'll tell you some about the cell phone holder itself. Now that we know how to mount it, how to power it, all that good stuff. So the great thing about this is you set it one time. It fits from two and one eighth to three and a half inches. But by unscrewing this completely, it'll widen it and then it's set for your phone. Slide it in there, boom, it's there. I never have to adjust it again. It's definitely the easiest cell phone mount to work with. Another good thing about a fairing bike, having it mounted here, normally I would always put stuff like this on the left side, because if I'm riding down the road, I'm throttle. I can do things like this. Granted, this model does have cruise control. My model has cruise control, but all the same, you don't want to set your cruise and then use this because then now your, your brake hand is, is gone as well. But mounted in the middle like this, I can actually easily use either hand to do things. This is absolutely perfect for navigation since that's really the only time I'm going to use my cell phone on my bike. If I'm on my bike, I just want to be on my bike away from everything. But if I don't know where I'm going, I'm on a trip or something, I'm looking at the road, my navigation is there. Simple. Since this model doesn't have navigation, that would be great. Matter of fact, my model doesn't have navigation. I think I'm really going to take this back off this bike and put it on my own. <laughs> Obviously, I'm working with Zero 3D on this. They sent me those items. Worked with them before. I'll link those videos in the description too. Some of their products I really, really like. I, th I think you can probably gather from the video that I'm a fan of what they're offering with the ball mount system. Matter of fact, I'm such a fan that in working with them, they asked me to install that on an Ultra because they wanted to show off some of the mounts that fit only that model. As you can see, they have a mount for everything. My toolbox, a square tube, mounted a cell phone to it today. And that also works with the cup holder GoPro, as I mentioned, I, do, I really do like it. Uh, I do have a few things that I don't like. The chrome hardware on the perch, It'd be a nice touch if that was black as well. You know, if you're selling a black mount, I think it'd be cool to be come with black hardware. Having said that, I'm in the technician business. I'm not in the, you know, locating parts and figuring all that kind of stuff out. So I don't know if, how hard that is to do differently than what they're doing. Now, I mentioned that I think the cell phone mounting system is one of the best on the market. One thing I like too, I don't have my cell phone because I think it's probably gonna rain on me before I get home. The, I don't have to do anything with this. It's still tight. It's not going to jiggle, jingle around and stuff as I'm riding down the road without anything mounted to it, which is great. It comes off very quickly, leaves that very small ball mount, so I don't always have this holder there. But I wanted to show it off partially because in my review, uh, what I think of the product, well, I think enough of it that I didn't leave it on that Ultra that they wanted me to install it on. I installed it on this bike. Um, because, well, quite frankly, I'm gonna start using it. And then when I get to work on my bike, 
I can move my cell phone holder to my toolbox. When I use my Bluetooth speaker, I got my phone mounted somewhere safe instead of just sitting there where I might accidentally put a tool down on the screen or something. And when I hop on my, my mini bike, I got a cell phone holder then too. So if you are in the market for a cell phone mount or any other Ciro products, their big cup holder, their action camera mount that also uses the ball mount system, they are linked in the description below. I want to stress the fact that using those links really helps me out. Not only does it help the channel, support the channel monetarily so that I continue to make videos like this for you, it also shows Ciro that it was worth it to send me the products. So I would really appreciate it if you checked those links out. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notification so that you know when to upload. I got a video popping up over here and over here if you hadn't quite got your fix. And we can now roll the bloopers. Man, y'all wish y'all had a mini bike with a cell phone mount on it. <laughs>